Hello Ratbags, it's Jay Plays Games. I'm going to give you the Fallout 76 news you need to know about. Huge changes coming to the game very soon after launch. A bunch of information was posted last night and this morning. I'm going to go through everything for you right now. But this stuff is mental that they're releasing this so close to launch that we haven't heard about some of this stuff beforehand. So all here, all go. Make sure you like this video. Let's go. There's only 10 hours or so before Fallout 76 goes live. It's already playable if you're in Australia. And obviously for the rest of the world it is coming at 12 midnight your time. You can preload it for PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. So if you haven't done that already, go to it right now. So they posted on the official forums and lots of media outlets as you saw have covered it. It's a bit short on details but it does hint at massive changes coming based on the feedback they received during the beta. There's going to be a lot of in camp improvements to the building system, there's going to be new quests and events, new vaults opening, characters respecking, and a faction based PvP system, and much more. Now, I had first hand experience of this. I went to Vault 94 and it's locked. You can't get through it without a code, and someone said they were going to be adding dungeons to the game. So, does this mean that there will be more players added to servers, or is it going to be just another dungeon or another area that you'll actually come out of, not just Vault 76? Now, only a couple of days ago, Pete Hines. Now, only yesterday, Pete Hines said that you won't be able to respec your specials. But as you can see, the character respecking is part of their plans in the future. I know a lot of people were a bit disappointed they couldn't change their special ability, so this is going to be great news. Also worth noting as well that achievements aren't going to work retroactively. You're going to have to go and do them all over again. It really might be worth starting over from a brand new fresh character. Now I'm not going to go through every single one, but I'm going to just highlight some of the ones that I think are interesting. First contact and final departure are obviously the story modes. And as you can see, a lot of them are focused on some sort of story element. The usual sort of thing you'd expect, build a camp, you get an achievement. And with all of these, you're going to get some sort of trinket or some sort of item. Build 100 camp items, Appalachian HOA. And it looks like these are lots of side quests revolving around killing certain level 50 creatures. Queen of the Hunt, I'm guessing, is going to be something like taking on Queen Murloc. Monster Mash, win the Monster Mash event. So lots of these are events as well. One achievement or trophy makes you join 20 teams. And you can reach level 100, but remember, you don't get any special points after level 50. Read 20 magazines, be at ground zero of a nuclear blast. Revive 20 fallen players, complete 20 challenges, possess 10,000 caps, whoa. Discover 100 locations, kill a wanted player, kill another player, kill 20 players, kill 300 creatures. And the last one there, it looks like it's I am become death, which is launch a nuclear missile. Pretty standard stuff, really. Be interesting to see how well it goes with some of the ones where you have to join 20 teams if people will be doing that randomly just to get the trophy or achievement. Now if you're excited about playing it at midnight there is one thing you need to know. It's going to be a 51 GB day one update. This is pretty incredible really at such a large update on day one it is just a bit much. Considering they've had the beta I really wish they'd managed this a little bit earlier and we could have downloaded it ahead of time. If it's the first time you're going to be playing Fallout 76, you're going to need 100 GB of space. Now, stash sizes aren't changing yet. Everyone seems to be going, yay, they're changing stash sizes. But don't expect anything too massive. There's been no confirmation that they're going to be going to some huge, massive size. We may only see an increase of over 50 or something like that. So until we get any more word, I wouldn't be too excited by the announcement that they are looking at adjusting the stash sizes. So it looks like all this promotion with the factions may pay off when it comes to PvP. It does look like you're going to be able to either join one of these factions and then build towards some sort of common goal by killing other players or looting or getting XP for your clan. Or maybe it will be a case of actually being able to set up your own clan. I really think it's going to be the former. I think you're going to be joining one of the clans that are there like the Enclave, the Brotherhood of Steel, the Free States Responders or the Raiders. It would make sense that they've already got them established. They're well over the map. If you go around, you'll see lots of insignias, lots of markings saying that clans are here in these areas. And so it kind of makes sense that you would choose one of them to join part of. Now, they've got some experience with this with Xenomax and Elder Scrolls Online. And it's very similar in terms of joining what pact you've got there or what clan or what faction. And it looks like if you are early or you've somehow managed to change your timings, you can actually get on the servers and play now. 
and join all them Australians. Remember, I don't think there is region locks on the game as such. So let me know how that goes for you. Let me know if you're dead excited about finally joining it. There's no doubt about it. It needs these kind of improvements. It's just a shame they didn't get this out for launch. I think they could have created a lot of goodwill with just a few small things like being able to character respec or like announcing there is going to be some faction based PvP. Fallout 76 is going to be a game that's so different to everyone. If you've not already checked it out, go and see what I really think about the beta all the time that I've got to play with it and Fallout 76 in general. I also give you a little bit of talk about hate bait and why Fallout 76 is just attracting so much attention, most of it negative. It isn't the best game, it's not going to go down in the annuals as the top 10 game you've ever played. But from my opinion, I think it's got some qualities that are worth sticking with and trying it out for sure for full launch and see what kind of service it brings in the next few months. There's been lots of times I've been disappointed with their decisions and I definitely think they could have launched the game with a whole host more, but I'm still quite drawn to playing it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below and if you're not picking up for this 76, why are you even here? Bear that in mind next time you go and watch a hate bait video. I am Joe Plays Games. I will be ready. I'm going to download it tonight and I'm hopefully going to be doing a live stream or video as soon as it's up for me. My internet is a bit slow, so I might not even be able to download it until like one o'clock. But the minute it's ready, I will be doing some sort of live stream alongside all the extinction and the forest content I've got coming. So if you're a big fan of survival games, open world games like these, make sure you subscribe to me. Make sure you've got notification bell on. And stay tuned, I've got lots of guides coming for Fallout 76, now it's in its full game. Until then, rat bags, laters!